good day. The state television company of Western Armenia represents all the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast, Sons of Western Armenia, Moses Gorgisian, on the issues of the Armenians of Western Armenia. The Azerbaijani in Berzor have raised to the ground a memorial for the victims of the Great Patriotic War. The President and the National Assembly hold the primary mandate of the people of Artsakh. They respond to Aliyev from Stepanagert. In German discourse, Armenians were the Jews of the East. Armenian Minister of Defense clarifies circumstances of Azerbaijani abduction of Armenian servicemen. Traditional Vartat on holiday in Tbilisi. Ancestral cradle Gorgisian was the town of Saget, Bitlis province of Western Armenia, where was born Mofsa's grandfather Sami Chavush. During the genocide against the Armenians in 1915, he became a fighter of struggle. He was one of the organizers of the self-defense of his native village and a participant in many decisive battles, including the Battle of Sardarapat. There is information that around 100 girls were released from the Turkey, and the last of them, Veronica, was destined to become Mofsa's grandmother. The path of migration led Mofsa's ancestors to Egypt. During the genocide, Mofsa's mother's family, Atarians, moved to Middle East from historic Cilicia. After World War II in 1947, with hundreds of thousands of pining Armenians, Mofsa's parents, Gevork of Cairo and Alice of Halev, were repatriated in the first caravan. However, by the decision of the Soviet authority, they were classified as undesirable elements for society and were deported to the the Altai region. Mofsa's parents met there, got married, and some valent Araks were burned. After Stalin's death, the Gorgisian family was allowed to return to their homeland to settle down in Yerevan, where their youngest son, Mofsa's, was born on December 3, 1961. Mofsa's was three years old when he lost his father, who died from various diseases acquired in exile. After receiving an education, the future hero enrolled in the director's department of the Faculty of Culture at Yerevan's State Pedagogical Institute, after which he worked at the Goris Drama Theatre in 1986-1987. Movsez Gorgisian is one of the very few whose efforts led to the creation of the Independence Army unit in 1989. Many remember Gorgisian standing in Freedom Square and calling out long live the Armenia that will come tomorrow. Movsez was one of the first to raise the tricolor on Freedom Square. However, such a figure was not destined to see an independent Armenia. The full article is available on our website. According to UNESCO, in 1974, of the 913 Armenian historical architectural monuments preserved in Western Armenia after 1923, 464 have completely disappeared, 252 are in ruins, and 197 are in need of complete repair. Armenian architectural structures have been constantly blown up, used as targets during Turkish army exercises, and the stones have been used as building material. In some rural areas, they serve as burns, warehouses, and prisons. In many cases, Armenian churches have been turned into mosques. In 1987, in the sixth paragraph of the resolution adopted by the European Parliament on June 18, it was noted that the Turkish government must pay attention to the language, culture, and educational system of Armenians living in Western Armenia, while also showing a proper attitude towards the Armenian monuments located in the territory of occupied Western Armenia. The consistent destruction of mis appropriation of the Armenian cultural heritage is a continuation of the Turkish policy of genocide against Armenians. Medieval Armenian monuments destroyed during the genocide against the Armenians and in the following years are also presented. Azerbaijan in Berzo raised to the ground a memorial of glory built during the Soviet period and situated on a hill in the center of the city to commemorate the victims of the Great Patriotic War of 1941-1945, the State Service for Historical Environment Protection of the Republic of Artsakh. The names of heroes are engraved on three walls of the memorial. The memorial of glory includes three cross stones. One is dedicated to the special regiment, another is dedicated to the Armenians who fell for the liberation of Shushi, and the third to Vazgen Sarksyan, the report says, the government of Western Armenia once again addresses the issue of preserving indigenous peoples and cultural values. Nomadic tribes who destroy the culture of indigenous people cannot create monuments of the same age and historical and architectural value on this territory because this territory does not belong to them. They lack their own system of cultural values, except for vandalism and a genocidal policy, which is clearly manifested in the behavior of the Baku authorities. 
Just a few days ago, the President of the Republic of Artsakh called upon the people and authorities of Azerbaijan to end the policy of hatred and genocide against the people of Artsakh and accept the principle of equality of peoples, as well as recognize the title and rights of Artsakh from the indigenous Armenians people as enshrined in international law. As reports are members, this was stated by the Press Secretary of the President of the Republic of Artsakh, Lucina Avanesian, in response to Aliyev's statement on the elimination of state attributes in Artsakh. After the trilateral ceasefire statement, Azerbaijan has repeatedly spoken to the people of Artsakh in the language of force, and we have witnessed and continue to witness the aggression in the form of local combat operations, blockades, energy, and other pressures. This time, the president of Azerbaijan also added illegal demands to the elected authorities of the people of Artsakh. The president and the National Assembly have the primary mandate of the people of Artsakh elected on the basis of democratic principles, and the constitution of the Republic of Artsakh. The President of Azerbaijan is well aware that the primary source of Artsakh's subjectness are those state institutions, and by making such demands, he is in fact recognizing the legitimacy and importance of those institutions. On the eve of the President of Azerbaijan, Aliyev stated in Berzor, Karabakh, Armenians have only one way left, to throw the fake state attributes in the trash can, dissolve the parliament and obey the laws of Azerbaijan. The government of Western Armenia responds to such statements of the Baku authorities reminds. Baku authorities are illegal because having gained independence from USSR, they have lost any territorial claims to Artsakh. Let us remind you that the authorities of Baku became independent without Artsakh and Nakhijevan, not counting Eastern Armenia and the lands seized from its territory, which are part of the reconstituted by Boros Nobar and recognized by more than 20 states. The state of Armenia, the continuation of which is the Republic of Western Armenia. Artsakh, which is also a province in out with RSA autonomy, has sovereign bodies elected by its own people in accordance with all international norms. The question is, according to which norms the Baku authorities have self-determined, on the basis of which right they dare to speak about their own false laws. Once again, the false attributes of the Baku authorities should be in dustbin of history of the Baku authorities. After his first book, Atatürk and the Nazis, which was translated into Turkish and aroused great interest in Turkey, historian Stefan Irig launched another important work. Agos Weekly talked to the author of the book Justifying the Genocide, published by Harvard University Press about Germany's historical attitude towards Armenians and the prehistory of the facts. The book presents the German viewpoint on Armenians from Bismarck to Hitler. The discussion of the violence against Armenians and the Armenian question inevitably brings the topic of Jews. Racist elements, justification from Germans, and hostility towards Armenians have often been associated with the so called Jewish question. During the winter of 1932 to 1933, Werfel, while delivering lectures, warned Germany about Hitler by reading excerpts from his unfinished book. One chapter described how the pro Armenian German activist Johannes Lepsius met with Enver Pasha in 1915 in an effort to halt the genocide. According to a review written that winter, Werfel portrait Leipzig's addressing not only Enver but also Germany as a whole. Unfortunately, Werfel could not complete his warning about Hitler in time. The novel was not published until late 1933 and was subsequently banned. Werfel's story had strong ties to both Germany and the Jewish community. Due to the timeline, it is often referred to as an Armenian narrative. To read the full interview, please visit our website. It has been reported that on May 26, at 7 p.m., a logistic vehicle operated by two soldiers of the Armenian Armed Forces was discovered on an inter-position road. The vehicle was loaded with food and water intended for combat posts. According to the press service of the Armenian Defense Ministry, on May 26, Azerbaijani mass media, followed by the Azerbaijani Border Service, spread misinformation claiming that the Armenian site had attempted sabotage, resulting in the detention of of two Armenian servicemen. We would like to reiterate that the report from the Azerbaijani border service alleging an Armenian sabotage attempt is a complete falsehood and disinformation. The Armenian side possesses sufficient evidence to refute these claims, which will be presented to our international partners, stated the Armenian Defense Ministry. Furthermore, a weapon was found attached to one of the soldiers in the vehicle, which indicates that even if the soldiers had excited the vehicle and not familiarized them 
themselves with the surroundings they could not have had any subversive intentions. Extensive efforts are currently underway to investigate the circumstances surrounding the alleged kidnapping of Armenian soldiers, Harutsun Yurakovich Hovakimian and Karen Ashotovich Ghazarian by Azerbaijan. Earlier, the Defense Minister of Armenia had reported the loss of communication with two soldiers of the Armenian Armed Forces, who were responsible for supplying food to military positions as of 7 o'clock on May 26. Every last Sunday of May, traditionally in Tbilisi, is celebrated as Sayat Nova Memorial Day, called Vartaton. The traditional holiday, which is celebrated annually in May this year, was more symbolic because this holiday coincided with the Independence Day of the First Republic of Armenia. The head of the NGO Union of Armenians of Georgia, Maria Rakelva, told G News, For almost 100 years and more, this cultural city has been celebrating this holiday, which is dedicated to the Caucasian Ashur. Sayat Nova. This is the first time I participate in this event. I am very pleased and thankful to all those who are here today and those who have contributed to this event, said RA Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary to Georgia Ashot Sambatian in his speech. It was also gratifying that Sayat Nova Ensemble, led by People's Artist Tovmas Bogosian, took part in Vartaton. In addition to the Sayat Nova Ensemble, singers, ensembles, and dancers from Armenia and Georgia performed various dance and musical numbers. Makvala Gonashvili, president of the Georgian Union of Writers, made an important statement. In particular, she said, next year is a jubilee year, the 110th anniversary of Vartaton. In this regard, I propose to establish a Sayat Nova Award, which will be given to those people who have contributed to this cause. It was first celebrated in 1914 in Tbilisi at the initiative of the great Armenian writer Hovanes Tumanyan, artist Georg Bashinjagyan and Georgian poet and literary scholar Eos Grishashvili. On this day, participants lay red roses on Sayat Nova's tomb in the courtyard of Surb Gevok Church and listen to his works. Thank you for your time and attention. Now the musical part, the Armenian folk song. <laughs> 